This here is the Redmi Turbo 3 and it's a 400 USD phone. So 400 US dollars guys. You can also probably buy cheaper. This here is the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra and it's also a 400, 1400 USD dollar phone. So okay, let me start up both phones. All right, so in this video, I'm going to compare some of the applications that I run on uh, daily base. It's gonna be more like a speed test video. I've charged the Redmi Turbo 3 to 100% and the S24 Ultra is charged to 85%. I will also encode and decode one file so that we can compare which phone is faster. I think that's kind of obvious, but what we need to understand is really how quicker is the S24 Ultra. And of course, I'm gonna show you some of the key differences within the chips that have been used on those two phones. Okay, now on your left, again, it's the Turbo 3, and on your right is the S24 Ultra. Let's start. So I'm gonna start with the hardware setup because of course, there are some corners cut for this phone to be 1000 USD less than this phone. Both of them are using the Qualcomm Snapdragon. Here we have the latest and greatest top flagship chip. This is the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Here guys, if you don't pay attention, you might think it's the same, but it's not. It's the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8S Gen 3. Both phones are powered by the same performance core, and this is the Cortex X4, but it's clocked higher here in the 8S Gen 3 version. The efficiency cores are Cortex A720. Here again, we have a different setup. You can just see it here. And then we have also the smaller cores, the Cortex A520, which are also clocked different. And also, of course, the configuration is a bit different. Now, how does this translate in terms of performance? This is the idea of this video, but performance is based on many other factors. It's just not only about compute power, right? What is important to be said is that the 8S Gen 3 does utilize the very same RAM. It is the LPDR5X and the storage is UFS 4.0 on board of those phones, which is actually a very nice premise, which means that the 8S Gen 3 is actually not so different. It's actually closer to the 8 Gen 3, but of course there are differences. The GPU that is used is the very latest and greatest Adreno 750. Okay, here we have the 735, which means that there's gonna be some things like illumination effects that we will not have here. And besides this, there are some other things, right? Here we have the latest and greatest like WQHD display from Samsung, which is amazing. Here the display is very good, but it's only one and a half K, so it's not only FHD, right? And it's also not 2K, and I actually like it, guys. I'm gonna show you also, in the course of this video, this is a very capable display. This is the resolution that is used here, you can compare it. By the way, Dolby Vision, HDR10, HLG, HDR10+, Plus. this display supports that this phone is also Wide one L1 certified, which means that you'll have no problem watching Netflix, I will actually show you later, okay? This is very important in case you wanna buy this phone and watch your Netflix movies, yeah, you are going to be able to do so. Also, this phone supports 120 hertz refresh rate, okay? It's, by the way, also smart, so I'm using the smart or the default mode, which is the same here, it's the adaptive mode, the phone decides whenever to use the 120 hertz, okay? Besides that, the USB-C port here is only to zero, here is 3.1, all right, so we don't have also a display port, so there are of course some corners to be cut, and probably one of the main differences is on the back. Here we have a full-fledged camera setup with a very powerful ultra-wide, we have 5x optical zoom, 50 megapixel camera, we have 10x here. Here, guys, we do have a very capable 50 megapixel Sony LED 600, which is the main camera, and we do have a, a yeah, rather not so nice 8 megapixel ultra wide and a flash and a very nice front camera. So, of course, those are the corners to be cut to really make the price be like 400, right? So, like I told you in the beginning, this is 400 USD, this is also 400. 1,400 USD. And without any further ado, guys, I'm going to show you that I have many apps open, which I'm gonna close right now. I'm not using any special mode on the Redmi, so the current mode is the balanced one. This reflects actually the battery, and I'm also using the standard performance profile on the S24 Ultra. Also, guys, I'm running the very latest and greatest software on the Redmi Turbo 3. is the Xiaomi Hyper OS version 1070, of course, is Android 14, and the Android 14 with the security patch level from 1st of April on the S24 
24 Ultra. Let's make sure that we don't have any applications running in the memory, all right, and what we then do, we'll start with the first portion of video, okay? So I'm gonna show you guys, this is the lock screen, all right, um, now this is entering the phones, okay? So one more time, and I'm just presenting this here so that you can compare it. And of course, ultrasonic here, I really prefer, ultrasonic is really the best. This here is an optical fingerprint reader, but it's actually very quick. So I was actually surprised with the speed of it. So now I'm inside the main menu, HyperOS versus One UI 6.1. You know how it goes when I swipe like this, I get access to either here my quick setting or when I swipe like this, I get access to the rest here, guys. It's kind of the same, so when I swipe uh, like this, I'm getting access to all the nice stuff, the control panel, and when I swipe like this, I'll get access to my notifications. Now, I'm gonna also clear notifications here. I won't just have a pure setup, right? Scrolling through the phone themselves is just as this, right? So, right now, if I do like this, yeah, you see, I don't have here an up drawer. If I do like this, I'm going to enter in my up drawer. This is customizable, um, as well as on uh, the S24 Ultra, also on the Redmi Turbo 3. If I go to the very left here, I'm going to engage with Google. If I go here, I'm going to enter in the up vault. And yes, this is a Chinese version, guys. Right now, this phone is only available in China, and the option is Redmi Turbo 3. You can buy this with up to 16 GeoFram and up to one terabyte of storage. Hopefully in the next few months, this is going to see the light of a global release, maybe under different branding. It's probably gonna be under the Poco Poco phone uh, F6 Pro, but then I don't think it's gonna cost like 350, 400 USD. Before I start, let me show you the brightness settings and something guys that is very, very important. This phone here has a very nice and capable display. And actually I tested it also into the bright sign light and I was surprised because the technical specification do say that it can do 2400, but you know how it goes with a lot of the Chinese phones, most of this is marketing. In this case, there were even some people I've seen in the, some of the Chinese reviews, they were able to measure 2400, of course, maybe on a very tiny spot, but I can tell you this is indeed a very bright display okay and now you can see I have pumped up the brightness on my both phones to the maximum so that you can see and now of course I'm gonna go back to the adaptive brightness and without any further reduce guys let me just open the first folders so this is gonna be the social one and I'm gonna start with telegram okay giving you this nice experience going outside all right one more time telegram okay yeah, this is how it goes. So now guys, I'm gonna start and I'm gonna open Messenger. All right. Very smooth on both phones. Do I believe that the S24 Ultra with the Agent 3 is able to just be a tiny bit quicker? Now, the third app I wanna share is Facebook. All right, I can see here again, no surprise that the S24 Ultra is just been able to launch quicker. Okay, so now let me show you the Instagram. Okay, again, I think a tiny bit quicker on the S24 Ultra. Now let's just try to browse through the applications to see what is um, the feeling when we're actually using those apps. And now I'm gonna go to the left, giving us here the preview of the camera. Browsing, browsing, and now let's try to do another swipe to the right to engage with the camera. All right, this is pretty much what we have. And as you can see, it's not that bad at all, right? Like so far, although of course this phone is just a tiny bit quicker, I think that the Redmi Triple 3 is just, yeah, quite nice with the performance. Now let's open some stock things and we're gonna start with the stock weather widget. All right, okay, this time you can see the Redmi Triple 3 was actually a tiny bit quicker than the S24 Ultra. With that said, guys, let's just try to open some stock apps. I'm gonna open now the Play Store. Okay, also I think a bit quicker here. All right, top charts, other devices. Okay, going back to top charts, going back to for you. All right. I got a feeling that there was a short lag here and browsing on the S24 Ultra is just a tiny bit smoother. Now going outside, now let me show you, those are all the apps that I have open. Okay, I'm gonna leave them right now inside the memory. Let's start some games and see how these phones will handle it. CarX, my first choice, very heavy game, a lot of loading, a lot of resources. So actually, the loading screen here was loaded quickly on the Redmi Turbo 3, 
but now let's just see which phone is going to complete the full load and as you can see there is a progress bar here loading all the cars all the NPCs I guess the poles oh all right here I think s24 ultra seems to be quicker or not let's just see we can see there is this progress bar filling up almost done on uh, the s24 ultra and yep the game loaded quickly we are now inside the game all right like i told you you will not have that many differences but for sure there will be differences why because the 8 gen 3 guys although a lot of the things even the memory is lpddx5 same technology but the memory bandwidth in the 8 gen 3 is actually higher right so there are still these things and uh, mainly due to the fact that the whole core setup is different honestly i expected that the turbo 3 is going to die on this Corex game because the Corex game is really ridiculously heavy and most probably also not so well optimized but if you can go and watch my benchmark video yesterday you're gonna see that actually the Redmi Turbo 3 managed to surprise me and in fact it ran the Corex in a very nice way of course the resolution here is 1.5 and not WQHD but you get the point right this here is a $400 phone and this here is again $1400 phone so there is a I would say not so subtle differences now check something interesting I have downloaded a commercial for LG which is a 4k video I think just above one minute and I have this open on both of the phones what I will try to do, I will re-encode it using 1080p, using 60 FPS frame rate and also using the highest available setting for the core rate which eventually should result in an estimated file size with 195 megabytes, okay? It is the same file on the Redmi Turbo 3 and also on the S24 Ultra. I'm gonna press the conversion button here, Oops, a bit later for the Redmi Turbo 3, but nevertheless you can just see how much more powerful the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is and how quicker it handles activities like this. When you have to edit video, you have to encode, re-encode, like we're almost over in 20 seconds and the 8 Gen 3, okay, being really not the flagship chip, um, yeah, will take probably twice, even triple the time to just render the very same file right to 1080p uh, with the very same settings, okay? What is very important though is that um, this speed in rendering, right, is not often translated in the day-to-day -day activities and this is why, you know, I'm doing this speed test for you to be able to see what happens because now I'm going to go back on my screen and I'm going to show, so what happens if I, let's say, open Spotify, all right? You can just see like the S24 Ultra of course will be 99% quicker in all the things that you do, in all the tasks that you execute. Let me now also try to open Mixcloud. See? Even here, like milliseconds, right? But what I want to say is that um, when you just use your phone in day-to-day -day activities, you will not be able to really kind of notice this. So this is not to say that the Redmi Turbo 3 is of course really going to kill S24 Ultra. I have invented the term that this is a killer of flagship killers that are intended to kill flagship phones, right? So of course this here is top of the pop, this is the more premium phone. This is right now like probably the best that you can buy with your own money. But if you wanna have fun guys, then I guess the Redmi Turbo 3 is just going to be uh, enough for you and it's not just having fun. I do believe that this is a very capable phone, right? So if you're also on a budget, why not just buy a phone like this? You can just see the Netflix is working, YouTube is working. You can enjoy also the stereo sound because this phone has also two speakers. So the most important parts in a phone, the display, the sound, okay, connectivity wise, also camera wise, I think they're here. So now the biggest question for you is, is it worth paying this additional $1,000 to just get the premium material light, to just get rid of the plastic and to get this aluminum and glass sandwich and get the flattest screen and get the highest needs and get the highest cameras? This is here the question that every single user needs to answer to himself, right? If you're not doing YouTube reviews like I do, Maybe you don't need the S24 Ultra. If you don't need the S Pen, right? If you will never use the S Pen, most probably you don't need the S24 Ultra. You can play games on the phone and you can execute most of the day-to-day -day activities with almost like 80, 90% the speed that, let's say, the best phone on the market can do. And if that's not uh, your thing, and if that's not enough for you, yeah, I'm not sure really what else will be. 
Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope that this video was able to answer some of the questions. Really, what is the difference between the ADS Gentry to the A Gentry? What is the $1,000 difference from a phone that costs $400 to the phone that costs $1,400? And also, to help you quantify if this difference is just important enough for you will make an impact for you so that you have to pay this money or just go with something that is really like on the budget but really is able to check and tick one of the main boxes or go somewhere you know in between all right let me know by the way what your choice for an in-between phone will be between 400 and 1400 and guys thank you so much for watching all these videos vst over bye <laughs>